Hey guys, TaterBuzz here. I, uh, I'm going to be doing a tutorial video for you guys today. This is how to color fill your magazines or slide, engraving, things on your receiver, etc, etc. Uh, this is a, a very easy thing to do. It's very inexpensive as well. I'll show you all the materials you need. It doesn't require a whole lot uh, or a whole lot of time, uh, but it's very useful, especially for magazines. Uh, a lot of guns come with magazines that have the round count on the back, but uh, sometimes it can be difficult to see if it's in low light or if you're not holding it a certain way. The, the black letters on the uh, magazines can be kind of difficult to see very quickly. So by adding a contrasting paint color, it makes it that much easier to be able to tell, oh, I've got 10 rounds, oh, I've got 8. Uh, and it, it's very useful for competition because a lot of competitions will only allow you to hold 10, 15, 5 rounds, depending, and uh, you don't always have time to sit there and look at your magazine. So this is one way to make it a lot faster and easier to tell. So I'm going to be teaching you guys the way I do it right now. Alright, so this is kind of what you're going to need to uh, do this paint filling. Of course you'll need the paint itself, in this case I'm using nail polish. You can also use like enamel paint, model paint, uh, testers, things like that. Those will work just fine, but I, this is like a dollar, dollar uh, bottle of nail polish and it works perfectly for magazines and then color filling on guns, whatever. Uh, you don't have to spend a lot of money to get something that works really well. So I got a couple different colors. I've also used uh, like these Sharpie paint markers. These actually work pretty well too. And uh, I use these to mark my magazines as well as kind of differentiate the colors. Um, so you'll need those and then you'll also need acetone. Uh, this is non-acetone, but it contains acetone. Pretty much any nail polish remover that contains acetone is gonna work just fine. Uh, however, you'll want to avoid things like rubbing alcohol, denatured alcohol, just because they're not really strong enough for some paints. Uh, they may work, but acetone is going to work for sure. Just a little disclaimer though, if your gun has a painted finish, you'll want to be careful with acetone. Um, Cerakote should be fine. Obviously anodizing, bluing, stainless steel, things like that are going to be just fine uh, to use acetone on. However, if your gun is spray painted or duracoated, those can be affected by acetone. You may actually rub away the paint. So just make sure uh, you've got a durable enough finish that you can do this on your magazines or your gun or whatever. So to kind of give you an idea of some of the finished products, here's a number of Glock magazines I've done. As you can see, they, they turn out pretty good. Uh, you know, nice and clean, makes it a lot easier to see exactly where it's loaded to, especially for competitive shooting. What you can actually do is, instead of painting them all white, if you tend to shoot Glock matches or uh, specific competitions that only allow 10 rounds, you can color in the first 10 white, and then after that color red or something, so you know that you're not over that. I, it just, it's a lot easier than you know taking a stock mag and then trying to get the lighting right so that you can see the numbers. That's the reason I do this. That and so I can differentiate the caliber more easily because I have multiple calibers. This is a 40 caliber magazine. And again, see how I have to kind of get the lighting right to even be able to see that. Uh, I like to do a slightly different color. So for 40, I'll actually use the Sharpie marker to do yellow. And then uh, everything else will be white. So it also, of course, works on other things. I just was doing some testing. These are some little like church key bottle openers. These work just fine too. As you can see, I got a couple different colors. And then this technique will also work on handguns and uh, you know AR-15s and whatnot. So you can you can fill in the slide with whatever color you want. All right, so I'm going to start off with the Glock magazine. Now for this, uh, I'm going to actually use two different colors and two different types of paint. Um, so it'll kind of show you how two different uh, materials look on uh, these magazines. So the first thing you're going to do is clean your surface. So take a nice paper towel, cotton ball, whatever, uh, rag. It's up to you what you want to use. I like paper towel because I can fold it up like a nice rectangle like this and then have a flat brushing surface. Uh, but the first thing you're going to do is clean off your surface so that the paint adheres well. So just uh, dip, dip this in the acetone and wipe it down. Try to, try to like press it into the indentations too. So apply some pressure and then just wipe away the excess and give it a, uh, a quick second to dry. 
So I'm actually going to do yellow for the caliber here and then white for all the uh, the round count markers. So I'm going to use the Sharpie paint marker for the caliber itself. So that's simply just shake it up, um, get the paint flowing. And then really all you're going to do is, is press it into there. You don't just want to like layer on the paint over, you want to press in as much as you can. That way it really fills the gap and, and keeps bubbles away. So this will just make it look a whole lot nicer. So don't be afraid to get paint all over the magazine, like all around it. That's totally fine. Um, it's good to have a little excess on there and I'll show you why. Uh, so once you've applied it, you're just gonna wait about like 30 seconds or so. Uh, to, to let this dry. It really doesn't take that long, especially uh, nail polish. That stuff dries pretty quick. Um, and you don't have to let it dry completely. Uh, it actually is a little easier to remove when it's somewhat tacky. So you can, you can kind of press the paint when you put it on and, and feel and see where it's at. Uh, if it's completely dried, it's actually going to be a little bit harder to remove. So once you're ready to uh, start taking that off, you're going to take your paper towel, Again, just splash a little acetone on there. Try not to get it a, like an excessive amount on here. If there's a lot, just kind of wipe it off, you know, wipe it off somewhere so it's not uh, like dripping with nail polish remover. And then you're just going to rub it in a circular motion. And the reason I, I was saying you rub it in a circular motion is because you'll want to uh, not just pull paint away, but you want to put it back in to these indentations and by going in a circular motion you're not just wiping paint off you're wiping it back in and then if it's a little overly wet you can just wipe it off with the paper towel the dry part and uh, as you can see a lot came off but there's there's some paint in there now some of these take multiple coats and that's probably what I'll do on this yellow bit uh, if you see a little haziness around it actually looks all right uh, you can uh, wipe it off some more and then wipe it back with that, that dry part of the paper towel. But uh, the Sharpie markers work. They don't work wonderfully, but uh, I mainly use them for marking magazines and it's really the only other color I have other than red. But red doesn't show up super well on black unless you apply a white color paint first. So uh, I'm going to move on to nail polishing in these different numbers here. All right, so we're gonna go with some white nail polish. Again, this is just something I got at Walmart for a dollar. They have uh, a number of different colors, but white is kind of the the easiest one to see on a black magazine, so that's why I use it here. So I shake it up a little bit. You really don't have to too much. And then you just simply uh, take out your brush, wipe off the excess. You don't want a big, huge glob of paint coming off. And then, uh, like like I showed you with the marker, Put it on there and uh, press it in. Don't just wipe it across. Try to dab it into the different letters. And uh, you can draw paint from where you have a lot of excess. Um, and then once you start running low on your brush, just dip it back in and uh, you know keep filling in these, these numbers here. All right. And it's the same thing with the drying time. Uh, I give nail polish slightly longer to dry, especially if I'm, you know, coating bigger things or filling in bigger logos or uh, just uh, trying to get it r to look real nice. Those I, uh, I let dry a little bit longer. So down here there's a, a, a lot more to fill and I'll give this a little bit more time, closer to a minute, maybe a minute and a half. And like I mentioned, you can, you can touch it and, and feel uh, whether it's still really wet or whether it's tacky. When it's tacky, it's kind of the ideal time to, uh, to start removing it. But uh, if you wait a little too long, no big deal. If you do it a little early, you may pull a little more paint than you want. But you can always do this in multiple coats. So if you don't like the way it turns out at first, go ahead and hit it again. Now if I'm painting multiple magazines like I am, I'll use this drying time to fill in the next magazine. So that's just what I'm going to do here. Is, uh, take a little time to fill this next one in. So, and now that that's dry, our first magazine should be uh, 
should be pretty dry. So I'm just gonna touch it. Yep, it's tacky. It leaves a little bit of fingerprint, but it doesn't stick to my finger. Uh, my finger's nice and clean, even after applying some pressure on there, but it's not super hard and dry. So this is the perfect time to remove paint. And uh, you're gonna do it just like I did with the Sharpie marker. So you uh, splash a little bit on your paper towel. Make sure you fold it over every once in a while. Uh, wipe away some excess so you're not just getting acetone all over the magazine. And then do those circular motions. So uh, since, I, since I painted the top yellow, I'm gonna wanna be careful not to wipe up over it because I can mix the white and the yellow paint. So just kind of be mindful of the edge of your paper towel or cotton ball or whatever you're using. But as you can see, it's coming off real nice and clean uh, with that circular motion. And I'm not peeling paint out of those recesses. I'm wiping it right back in. Anything I pull out is getting wiped right back in. Okay, so that looks really good. I'm gonna wipe it with the dry part. And then uh, I'm gonna fold my paper towel, splash it again, and keep going. Just work my way all the way down the magazine. All right? You'll wanna keep flipping and rotating the paper towel because eventually you'll have absorbed so much paint that you're just gonna start kind of wiping it on and then it will leave that hazy kind of residue and that's, that's not, not cool, man. You gotta, uh, you gotta make sure your magazines look cool. If your guns don't look cool, you're not doing it, you're not doing it right, okay? Now this, this bottom part is a lot of paint, so this is a great example on uh, how to reduce that haziness. So again, not a ton of, not a ton of acetone on here. Kind of take your time. Now watch what happens at first. See I'm first painting? Look at the paint everywhere. There, there is paint hitting all over the place. It looks hazy. But if you do this circular motion, rotate the paper towel to a new clean spot, splash it again, and then keep going, you'll see I, I'm picking it right back up. There. Looks pretty much perfect, right? And you can keep doing that. If there's, a, if there's a bit of a haze that you don't like, you know, let's say uh, there's a little bit of haze up here, I want it to look nice and clean, just lightly dab it in acetone on a new clean part of the paper towel and lightly hit that spot, just like that. And then hit it with a dry, dry part of the paper towel. And it'll look just fine. That's pretty much it, guys. This is a super easy thing you can do. That'll make your magazines much more useful for competition and uh, you know, just a little bit easier to read. Um, if you found this video helpful, please uh, hit that like button, subscribe for more videos, and uh, thank you guys for watching.